Hi everyone, how's it going? Welcome to Iron Griffin Studio. Um, this is the first video I've ever done for this channel and uh, I thought I'd start off by making something that was that I needed, something that was going to be useful to me in the future. Um, I like to do speed builds with relatively few supplies or minimal supplies and tools and that take not very much effort. Um, so what I needed was something where I could display future builds maybe, something where I could um, uh, show off or showcase maybe smaller items or models or whatever and then and it was going to have to be something that was practical too and um, something that could be used in in games of D&D uh, &D or, or whatever any sort of tabletop game really um, and then so really I decided on a kind of set like a, like a movie set sort of thing so it's going to be um, a base with three walls um, the idea was to create something like this so you've got a six by six inch square base and then you've got three walls surrounding it the fourth wall is removed so that you can get a camera in there and take some good pictures um, should be useful for glamour shots for things in the future um, now this is not going to be the only way you can make this kind of terrain but it's the way I've made it today um, I don't have things like a hot wire cutter um, and I have relatively few supplies compared to some other modelers out there um, but the things I did use for this was um, a sharpie, a ruler, some XPS foam, the blue stuff that we have here in, in the UK, um, some Mod Podge and some paint, maybe some flocking bits um, yeah, that's about it. So, let's crack on, get started. All right, so we'll be using some 10 millimeter uh, XPS insulation foam. It's pretty available in the UK. I'm not sure about other countries, but I think you have the pink stuff over there, which is pretty good anyway. All right, so I'm gonna draw out a three inch by three inch square. Uh, I'll be using a six inch by six inch for the final dungeon uh, set um, but I'm just showing you the method here and all you really need for this is a, a ruler, a sharpie and an exacto knife and, I mean, you can use a hot wire cutter if you've got one but I don't so this is my method um, do, doing the simple um, inch square floor tiles just just because it's easier for things like D&D &D, uh, to accurately place your models um, and here I'm just scoring lines in with an exacto knife. It's about a millimeter deep. This makes this step a lot easier now because what we have is a sharpened paintbrush handle, and we're going to just drag it through these score marks made by the exacto knife. And this will just separate the tiles a little bit better, the individual floor tiles, and um, give it a bit more definition, a bit more detail, and it will uh, show up a lot better once you put the paint on as well. So after doing that, maybe you can decorate each one, maybe put a few um, cracks or crevices in some of the uh, individual tiles, like I'm doing here. Um, this just stops the tile being really, really boring. Um, if, <laughs> this is always the danger with, uh, with stonework, is it can just look really plain and boring. So a few extra little details just to make it interesting always goes a long way. And you can put a few little pop marks in as well, just to uh, highlight where there's been a bit of erosion, maybe. And then now we're going to use the aluminium ball or aluminum if you're from across the pond. So yeah, just uh, just texture it. I can't oversell this bit. You've really got to texture the, the the stonework. If you don't, it just doesn't look like stone. So get in there with a with an aluminium ball and. Uh, you know, just light passes to begin with. If it's not enough, then you can go back and add a bit more until you're happy. Now moving on to the uh, the six inch by six inch, fully undercoated with mud podge and black acrylic paint. Um, this is the one I'm going to be using for the uh, the dungeon set. I should have probably shown this method of undercoating, but I didn't.
All right, when we get to the uh, the drabrishing stage here uh, with these little tiles, um, I've already done the big one, but this is just a sample to, to show you. What I'll be doing is um, be taking a bit of green, uh, sorry, gray paint. Um, I have a selection of different grays and tans and things. And it's good to just kind of get some irregular colors in there. Um, mix it all in, and then use a clean bit of kitchen roll. I'll try and get most of it off. And then you're just going to go over. Do a few different directions across the uh, the piece so that you get a nice even coverage and there's no necessarily obvious streaks. Um, it's just a fact of picking out all the highlighted areas. Uh, you can see now all the detail on that. It looks pretty good. Um, it's good to have a little piece on stand, like a little extra piece on standby that you've just done, so to see that the colours look at least fairly similar. Um, always keep one nearby, like a test piece that you've already done. Um, so you might want like a little bit of variation in there, so maybe like a little kind of red with like a dark browny red sort of thing with uh, with some sort of tan in there. Maybe you could maybe you can put a bit of that into it. That might be a bit too subtle. It, it, it gives kind of interesting variations in the rock. And you get kind of like maybe like like an iron stain. Some of the rocks are just oh, it's pretty cool. Nice and effective I think. Okay so I'm at the um, the washing stage. Uh, you can see we have a nice 6x6 tile with a bit of colour variation on it. But mostly stony looking but it looks a bit clean and a bit and a bit grey so we're gonna a bit of a wash on it. This is my um, homemade wash. It's uh, it's something like three parts black wash, two parts brown wash, and one part water. Um, the washes I've actually been using, I'll show you. They are the um, Vallejo. Is it Vallejo? No, sorry, it's Game Color. Game Color. Um, kind of a dip. It's kind of like a, a sepia shade, but it's a dip. And then the other one for the black that I've been using is the other game colour black shade wash or it's also I think a dip but it's quite thick so you want to thin that down quite a lot. Um, so yeah I use I've mixed them together, I've got a little squeezy bottle. So I'm just gonna put it on. And then you're gonna kind of stipple it like this. Don't don't brush it because if you activate the paint that's already on there you might end up smudging all the paint. So you just want to get all this down into the, into the detail, the texture that you've put on there already. As you can you probably see these ones here already have been done. give you a bit of an idea as to what I've been doing. Should make it look kind of um, dirty and um, kind of grimy I think because I imagine dungeons aren't particularly well cleaned. Don't know what dungeons you guys have been in but the ones I go in are minging. So So with this part here, I'm going to show my method of, uh, of texturing brick. Um, I absolutely hate etching in bricks with a pencil or a pen. It's so boring, time consuming, uh, 
it's hard on your hands even for a while so what I use is um, a small section of of square piping that I've got from a modeling shop I don't even know where I got this one from um, and I just stamp it press it into the uh, into the form and you get an instant texture um, this is effectively the same method as using uh, one of the green stuff world rollers which um, I'm yet to acquire but I think this is a pretty good method and you can switch it up with different sizes and, sh and and shapes of, of brick if you want. Uh, I've got an extra one there for maybe some base bricks to put along the bottom. Just make sure you um, sort of make odd patterns in the brickwork because none of this brickwork would have been accurately produced. I think um, keeping it kind of random does help the, the texture. So there you have it. Simple. And here is a finished wall for the dungeon set. Uh, put a few magnets in along the edges there just to help for later on and I textured it using the aluminium ball as usual. Uh, I think it's a good a good finish. Uh, yeah, this is just to show that you can use pretty much anything as a, as a, as a brick texture as long as it's kind of square and it would be helpful if you could maybe rough up the edges of it. Now with these uh, finished, well almost finished walls uh, I just want to mod podge them with a bit of uh, acrylic paint in there as well. Um, this serves as a good undercoat, uh, and it's a really quick and easy technique. You don't uh, lose any texture on the brickwork. You think maybe with mod podge because it's quite thick, maybe you lose texture. But as far as I can tell, you don't, and it's it works really well. As I, I think a lot of people use this method. This is nothing new. Uh, I just want to show this for, the, for, for video purposes, just in case maybe you're new to the hobby, who knows. So make sure you get into all the little cracks and crevices, use a, a big brush and really kind of stipple it into those cracks in the brick. And make sure you go over the back and the sides and the tops and the bottoms and make sure you just cover the whole thing so that uh, it finishes up nicely. Okay now onto the painting stage. Now you really you just want earthy tones here. Things that you know you could conceivably see rocks being. Uh, so use tans and vanillas and no, I don't like this brush. Don't want that one. This one's better. Okay. Tans and vanillas and uh, you know, reds and whites and greys things like that and just you want to just uh, kind of randomly select a stone and uh, and paint it up so that it looks uh, just a bit random really it's, it's got to look uh, like the stone is never is rarely just uh, a boring flat grey color um, it's, it's always full of, of bricks of, of different from different places or just with different mineral contents so what you end up with is, is kind of a, a bit of a mix of, of different different colors okay so after you've applied all those different earthy tones in, into the brick against the black brickwork it looks kind of well rubbish it looks very cartoony and very uh, well, unnatural, but using the dry brushing method we can put on some grey and really mute those those tones down against the black and now you can see it's starting to look a hell of a lot more like brickwork. So just cover the whole thing in a, in a light dry brush, you can always go heavier afterwards, remember, so yeah, just apply this and uh, just make sure you, you wipe off like almost all the paint that's on the brush. Like if it looks dry, keep wiping it and then and then try again. Um, really this is a, a technique that you'll get better at as you as you do it. There we go. Looks sweet. Now for the next stage. 
this is going to be the wash stage. Make sure these pieces are dry. They have to be completely dry. You do not want to reactivate the paint with the wash. So, put the wash on, get in all the cracks and crevices, and then dab it into the brickwork. Don't, don't brush it into it. Like use like a stippling or a dabbing technique with a, a large brush, um, and really get it work it into the into the, the cracks and the crevices there. And try not to get it to pull too much on the surfaces of the bricks. As you can see there towards the bottom, it's pulling a little bit. So I'm going to take that off. And I'm going to transfer it to the next piece. And really, you just want to cover it and bring all those, all those tones, all those slightly strange tones into kind of a, a dark, dirty brown black colour. Okay, so here we are. Um, got a pretty much finished dungeon set. Um, the walls were magnetized, so I can just remove them if I need to. Um, I'm thinking I might put a little bit of um, moss on them, and for that I'm going to use uh, is it? contrast plague bearer flesh by Citadel. Um, it's nice. It, it goes well. It's, it's a bit um, on a dark tile like this. It shouldn't be too powerful. So let's see how it works, shall we? Hmm. It's pretty subtle. I don't know how it's picking up on camera. So a little bit there, a bit here. I think you're gonna get like a lot of it between the um, between the stones, you know. But the moss is kind of just just clung to the crevices between them. Not too bad. Fairly happy with that. And then we're going to continue it across the uh, the stone walls. It's just a matter of uh, working the, the contrast paint there into the cracks and crevices. It it shouldn't be. Um, it's not a very thick paint contrast. It's but it does cover reasonably well, and it's fairly subtle on dark dark walls so yeah I think this is a pretty useful technique and just make sure you streak some down from the, from the roof as well it looks pretty good and there you have it pretty much finished dungeon tile I, I, I did add a few extra details I put some um, this kind of mossy uh, I think it's woodland scenics fine turf and uh, just mixed it with a bit of PVA and put it into the, uh, the crevices there on the wall. And then there's a bit of um, kind of dried grass flock, which I've used as hay, uh, just to place on the floor and break up the monotony of, of, of grey dungeon tiles. So I just placed the, uh, the walls on, uh, thanks to these magnets that I fitted earlier. And then you've got yourself a little dungeon set. Smashing.
All right, so there we go. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, then let me know in the comments below. And feel free to like and subscribe. And um, hopefully I'll be able to make a few more of these videos for you. Make sure to keep an eye out for those. And I'll see you all again very soon. Thanks for watching. Happy crafting.